Hello guys and welcome to a new Steel Division video today by me Vulcan. Today I have for you game 2 out of 2 games between Herr Robert and Mickey in round 2 of the second European tournament. Today we are going to be seeing Karpike and on the allied side Herr Robert is using the 15th Infantry Scots and on the Axis side Mickey is going to be using the Festung Gross Paris. So today we're really going to have to see whether or not either player can come out on top because in the first game between these two it was actually a draw and that was due to Mickey holding on to the points for the majority of the game but then lapsing in the late game which allowed Herobert to catch up and make it into a draw with his second Panzer. So that was a really fun game to watch. Now we're moving on to this one with two very different divisions. The 15th Infantry Scots, they can utilize the AVRE in Phase A. They've got the Churchill 5s that can dominate the 1200 meter range. They do have an abundance of rifles, some strong AT, and that sort of infantry availability. On the side of the Festung though, the infantry is even stronger. They have Landers, Schutzen, Bavelongs, and they can back those up with Panzer Treks and Feldgendarmery if they like. There is also the two-star Puma that we've seen with the Festung in previous tournaments do very, very well when it's been micro properly. And those things can come out with massive kill lists because of their mobility, allowing them to get into nice positions to take out enemy forces, as well as the high veterancy that can really be exploited to get that 10 AP gun on target. And it may be a choice to take out an AVRE if Herobit decides to bring one in at the start. Alongside that you do of course have the Aufklärer in the Panard MGs and those Panard MGs are good for just kind of holding the front line forwards and Mickey is going to be bringing in some of those. But let's jump over to Herobit's side first and see what units he's invested upon. So for the town on the top side it is going to be a few units of rifles accompanied by the command carrier there and the command infantry. On the bottom side it's going to be an AVR restart with many rifles and Bren Group. I think these are Bren Group and then you've got the Churchill 5 and the command carrier with the command infantry. So AVRE and Churchill 5 are the main two things that Herr Robert has at the start. And that AVRE may be hard for Mickey to deal with if he doesn't bring in any specific units to engage that at close range. But he does have the Panzer Trek on the top side here, accompanying a couple of flamethrower squads. There's also going to be the Lander shoots in there with the Feld Gendarmery and the Panzer 1B to help out with the HG at close range. Further down, we do see the flamethrower accompanying a Beverlongs and a Lander shoots in with the Feld Gendarmery. Another Beverlongs further down that's probably going to be sitting in the hangars at the middle of the map with the Panzer 39 and the, and the Panard MG with Aufklader. Then there's going to be a Lander Schutzen for the airfield, and on the bottom side the Panard MG, Panzerstreck, Command, and Beverongs just going to be taking up these hangars and trying to stop Herr Robert from making any ground. So both players putting at least one unit into the middle of the airfield, which is Important to do because if you don't then the salient can swing one way or another giving an advantage to your opponent early on and when it comes down to draws between players every little helps so in this case Herr Robert will want to take advantage and so will Mickey at the start as much as they can. So it looks like the engagement on the top side will fall in favour of Mickey. If these are only Bring Group and not Rifles then I think Herr Robert could find himself having a pretty hard time. They are indeed Bren Group, so Flammenwerfers, if they get up close and personal with the Bren Group, will absolutely demolish them because the Bren Group only have one HE. And the Flammenwerfer, they got three HE with their MP40, but they've also got the Flamethrower. Look at this Bren Group just die. Now Rifles, it's a different story. Rifles at close range with 8 HE can deal with the Flammenwerfer and they have the Bren Group at longer range to make sure they don't get close. But in this case, with the Bren Group already going down and now there only being two units of rifles here, this Panzer 1B will definitely assist in those engagements. On the bottom side it looks like a surrender for one of Herr Robert's units as it tries to push into Mickey's hangars. 
That push was assisted by the Churchill 5, but if, if those units stop firing, then all is well. Because Mickey's forces won't be spotted without the other rifle squad there sort of sacrificing itself. So the Kubel MG now coming up to help out. It does have to be careful. Unarmored Kubel MG, definitely vulnerable to the fire of the rifles. But at the moment, staying alive for a pretty damn long time. I almost pinned the rifles, but not quite. Did end up going down. Panzer 1B now getting involved though, and that has the 13 HE it can put on target. Landed Schutzen should be trying to get more aggressive, I feel. And the Fel Gendarmery will have to move up shortly in order to help out there. But it looks like Mickey had a different plan. He just wants to bomb this top side and rush on through with the Panzer 1B to surrender as many units as he can. Takes out the command infantry, takes out the rifles. Smart move there by Mickey, utilizing the Ju-188 to find those surrenders. And that's something that the Festung is very well known for, their use of those bombers, and something that has been taken advantage of here. So now this Panzer 1B is going to be countered by the honey of Herr Robert. He's made the right choice there, bringing that in. The Panzer 1B really can't do much against the honey since it only has HE. But one thing I have noticed is this salient on the airfield is ready to fall well in favour of Herr Robert because with this Churchill 5 supporting a push of Bren Group and rifles, there is potential for a like a lot of ground to be made. If the lander shoots and gets spotted and taken out, these guys can move forwards and secure that ground very easily indeed. But I hope Herr Robert does try and take advantage of that. But either way, AVRE, that's getting involved, smashes the Beverongs there, taking out six men in one shot. Panzer 1B is just trying to do a runner on the top side. Command Carrier has come up to the Flammenwerfer and will be under pressure here. Does need to be careful, the Panzer 1B can kill the command carrier, and the Flammenwerfer, if it gets in range with its flamethrower, can also do so. But for now, it looks as though the Panzer 1B is still in trouble, as the Honey is continuing to look for that engagement. Does get a transmission damage and is falling back, so it's only a matter of time until that Panzer surrenders. But, lovely kill there from the Panzer Shrek does take out the Honey, and that removes that threat on this top side. If the Panzer 1B now recovers, which I doubt it will, then it could be a threat once again. But due to the fact it's behind enemy lines, it's not going to recover. Like basically vehicles do not recover until they are back in friendly territory. So that's something that Herr Robert's going to take advantage of here, just surrendering that since the command carrier does not have the damage to take it out himself. AVRE now going to continue the engagement with the Beverongs, absolutely annihilates the hangar this time around. Uh, the flamethrower on the top side got cleaned up by the rifles, but Mickey has got himself into a nice position. The high strength of his squads definitely helping him out up here. But now the Panzer 39, that's going to be taking shots at the AVRE at close range. Does have to be careful. It's got a limited amount of rear armor, which could potentially cause the Panzer 39 to blow up if the shell of the AVRE lands behind it. Meanwhile though, not too much ground being made for Herr Robert just yet on this airfield. I am very surprised that Herr Robert hasn't tried to be a bit more aggressive with his infantry here because with the Bren Group and the Churchill 5 being in the same place, there's no reason why you can't sacrifice the Bren Group to just run forwards and potentially reveal any infantry on that airfield. But here we do see the AVRE annihilate that Panzer. It goes down. And now Herr Robert continuing the push up as his infantry are very well supported by this AVRE. Meanwhile on the top side though, Lander shoots and get the better of a unit of rifles. IG-18 also coming in onto the field now to assist in that endeavour. So just a standard infantry engagement here. It really just comes down to how Robert microing this AVRE as effectively as he can and not losing it to this Panzer Shrek, which is currently in a very dangerous position, but has been spotted. And that is something that Herr Robert will have to keep an eye on if he doesn't want to lose the AVRE to the Panzer Shrek in the future, because there is plenty of potential 
for that to happen. Churchill 5 missing the Opal Blitz does allow the Lander Schutzen to unload here. Otherwise, there was they would have possibly been killed. But AVRE makes short work of those Lander Schutzen. And now the rifles will be jumping forwards once again, but straight into Felgendarmerie and a three-star Panzerschreck, which does a lot of damage with the MP40s that they have available. Felgendarmerie did throw a H3 at the command carrier, but seems to have missed. On this top side, IG-18 helping pin down some units. But I'm really interested in this engagement on the bottom side as we do see another honey fall to a Panzerschreck. These rifles just not enough to spot that in time uh, there needed to be some recon ideally and Herr Robert falls prey to that once again so unfortunate that he has lost both of these honeys but I still believe he's in a very strong position it's hard for Mickey to really counter the 1200 meter range uh, Churchill 5 at the start of the game here because he's quite simply reliant on things like these Panzer Jaegers and those can be defeated by Churchill 5's at range uh, due to their low armor and the fact that they are open top. Also, even if the Panzerjägers do get into the 1000 meter range, they still can't penetrate due to the Churchill 5 having 9 front armor and the Panzerjägers having 9 AP. The IG is just smashing these Bren Group at really close range. I think the Bren Group there were trying to engage. They were sort of holding their fire, but ended up opening up with their rifles and that's one HE the IG had all day long to find that kill. Mickey though investing in more infantry just wants to flood these rifles out of the town and if any division can really match the infantry availability of the 15th Infantry Scots it is actually the Fest on Gross Paris so that is something that Mickey's going to try and take advantage of by the looks of things. But the honey is going to drive up to the top side, take out the IG. AVRE smashes a unit of Biverongs. And the Panzerschreck did go down. So Herr Robert still making moves, regardless of the amount of infantry that Mickey is trying to present. So these Biverongs might just about get the better of these Bren Group. I'm really not a huge fan of Bren Group. I understand why people bring them because they can be very useful for holding the front line in places where there is no aggression. But as soon as they get into combat, they are absolutely useless and therefore become almost a complete waste of points. But anyway, two inch mortar carrier going to be utilized to pin down infantry of Mickey so that Herr Robert can try and advance onto that. But here comes the JU 188 again and now Mickey will be looking for a surrender with these Lander shoots him but the AVRE does have a shot on target or oh, just resets the aim there by unloading the Lander shoots him which was very smart indeed but the AVRE is going to be able to stop the push of these units onto the rifles and rifle leader and prevent the surrenders so that's really important because that could have been another breakthrough for Mickey at the start of this game. Doesn't manage to make it work, but there is another JU-188 on the way, and this AVRE could be in trouble if this hits the mark. It looks like it's going to. It's also going to end up pinning Mickey's own infantry, though, and he doesn't have a vehicle that can go for this surrender because he ended up pinning his own lander shoots, and the Panzer 35 is already falling back because of the AVRE. That is really unfortunate because that would have been the perfect bombing strike to completely take advantage of that. Now on this top side, the Bevelongs are going to have to do a runner since they are under considerable fire. The Panzerjägers, they are making some ground across the airfield. The Churchill 5 did come under fire and was forced back. But now we see a two-star six-pounder on the way and Herr Robert will be trying to get that as close as possible so that it has as many shots on target as possible uh, to kill these Panzerjägers. And you can see basically Herr Robert took advantage of the fact these Panzerjägers fell back and did so for... He basically continued moving as long as he could until Mickey showed that he was going to aim back at that six-pounder. And that was really, really smart there from Herr Robert. And now he just needs to find the kill onto the second one. Does find the driver wound, potentially finds the kill... And honestly, Herr Robert's in such a dominating position right now. He's got the units to really make a strong push. 
if he had those honeys that he hadn't lost to the Panzer Shrex, then I feel like there wouldn't be much Mickey can do. But thankfully, due to those couple kills, Mickey is not completely overwhelmed just yet. And since we've now moved into phase B, ROA are on the scene and they will definitely help deal with these rifles at close range quite well. They will have to keep out of line of sight of the AVRE though, because this AVRE has been doing absolute work throughout this game so far. I tell you what, Herr Robert's done a nice job of cleaning up this bottom side though. Just one unit of Panzer Trek left. The Panard is causing problems, but yeah, this is looking really promising for Herr Robert on this bottom side. I'm just surprised that he hasn't killed off these lander shoots in yet and got the salient here. Does have himself a plus one though, which is going to count up his score slowly but surely. Give him that slight lead. But we saw Mickey do the same in the last game and it still ended up as a draw. So you never know. Ju188 coming in. Oh, that is going to be an absolutely nasty bombing strike straight onto the rifles and assault pioneers. It does completely destroy one of the assault pioneers, I believe. Uh, the other one left on one uh, man and well these rifles also taking a bunch of damage now the ROA are going to try and surrender these but the rifle leader is perfectly fine and does have the two star veterancy and for those of you that don't know veterancy on command does increase the command radius so the fact that these are two star means that these rifles had plenty of room for maneuver when they got forced to fall back. The bottom side has been cleaned up. I think the six pounder found the kill onto the Panard. The rifles are now going to be moving forwards aggressively. Bren Group also ended up finding the lander shoots and although it's likely that the lander shoots actually opened up onto the six pounder. So this is a nice salient here for Herr Robert to work with but Mickey is going to be bringing the two star S307 pack onto the field and this could do a lot of damage to Churchill 5s because it has 13 AP at maximum range which is 4 AP more than the 9 armor that the Churchill 5 has and it's also two star veterancy so if you bring in a command to support it it's not often that it misses and that's something you can really take advantage of. Now Herr Robert on the top side though does take out the Fell Gendarmerie, uses the 2 inch carrier to pin those down and I think he found the surrender there as opposed to the kill and Herr Robert slowly but surely taking control of this town and keeping the pressure on Mickey pretty much the whole way across. But he has got to go the whole way, he's got 25 minutes until victory. It really does depend on this engagement I believe. If the SG07 pack can find the kill onto the Churchill 5, then he'll be in a really, really nice spot. I think the trouble that Mickey is having is that because the SG07 doesn't have any HE, the 6-pounder, if it stays ahead of the Churchill 5, will present a threat to the SG07 pack. And therefore, Herr Robert could use that to take it out without being shot back at. But in this case, Mickey is allowed to shoot at the Churchill 5, and finds the crew knockout after the internal fire. Surely gonna find the kill soon enough. Currently just bouncing all over the place. That one actually missed. The fourth shot missed. And now the Churchill 5 will have time to fall back. That is really unfortunate for Mickey. Now the LEFH here has been brought in. That's going to be trying to hit this six pounder and remove that as a threat. The S-07 pack can't follow the Churchill 5 because that 6-pounder is there. So that's really, really annoying for Mickey. But another nice bombing strike onto the infantry of Herr Robert may cause more surrenders. But the rifle leader, again, completely unaffected. And that means these lander shoots aren't going to really do too much. Yes, they might be able to kill off the rifles at close range. But the rifle leader now engaging them from a longer range. Oh, look at this Ju-188. It's coming in and it's attacking the Spitfire Mark IX with its guns on the front. It actually can do quite a significant amount of damage. And it's almost shot down the Spitfire Mark IX there, but another Spitfire Mark IX comes in. The Bofors are forcing that back. 
and the JU-188 looks to be the one that's going to fall. Now rifles engaging ROA. The ROA are able to utilize their 14 HE, so those rifles should lose out. But JU-188 there actually ends up getting away because the Spitfire did not want to continue that engagement. Now the JU-188 here coming in, going to bomb out the 6-pounder, is forced back due to the Bofors. But it was funny that Mickey brought that in. It looked as though he was going to go for the engagement with the Spitfire. And the Spitfire shoot that down. It would be a nice kill to get. These JU-188s are worth 150 points apiece since the nerf a while back. And that is going to be a kill for Herr Robert. With the six pounder being pinned down, the artillery is still trying to take advantage, but no real ground made for Herr Robert on the top side as the lander shoots and probably just ended, get, ended up getting pinned here without command and then surrendered. Now Herr Robert going to be advancing with his Churchill OP. That's got the 140mm off map, which is what you can see here. That's going to be hitting potentially the Fell Gendarmery and the Beverong, allowing the continued push of infantry with this fire support from Herr Robert. And this AVRE is still alive. And that is something that is definitely changing the landscape of this battle. Not finding a way to deal with the AVRE early on is punishing Mickey so damn hard. ROA though, they do manage to clean up their infantry, take back a little bit of ground, but Herr Robert now sitting on the plus two, 750 points are heading his way. Panzer 4H has now been purchased, but is getting well into range of this of this crocodile, and that crocodile is not being fired back upon either. The Panzer IV is actually engaging the rifles. Surely this crocodile is going to find the kill now. The Panzer IV is aiming now at the crocodile. Does potent have potential for a penetration there, but not as much as of a chance that the crocodile has against him. These Panzer IVs at the 1000 meter range against the crocodile do lose out every single time. And that's what makes the Crocodile and the Churchill 7 so damn strong. That 15 armor is just ludicrous sometimes. So now the JU-188 coming in, that's going to be trying to bomb out the MMG carrier. And potentially killing the rifle leader there. Yes, it does. That takes away the veterancy from the AVRE and these vehicles that are continuing to push. So that keeps Herr Robert back for the time being. But he doesn't ha really have the infantry to support these bombing strikes right now. Because ideally you'd want to do what Mickey has been trying to throughout the game. And that is bombing and then like finding surrenders. But due to the clever placement of these rifle leaders, it just hasn't really been working out. Meanwhile, Herr Robert just continues to do damage and his units remain alive. But Mickey has done a fantastic job of reclaiming this bottom side and a really nice bombing strike there from the Spitfire Mark IX does kill the S-07 pack on the airfield, removing the threat from the Churchill V. And well, since the six pounder was dead, Herr Robert did wanna try and get rid of that as quickly as possible and he manages to do so, which is very nice. Now the Crocodile though engaging the Panzer IV and you can see that the Crocodile can just shrug off the shots from the Panzer IV. While well, this Panzer IV continues to get pinned and that is just the difference there in armour really making the difference. So now Assault Pioneers coming in to assist these rifles and they managed to get a grenade onto the Beferongs doing a nice amount of damage. Finding the pin would be absolutely fantastic for Herr Robert because he could then get aggressive and if he finds the kill onto the Fell Gendarmerie, then that's going to be a surrender. ROA though, being engaged at this distance is probably better than at the 100 meter range because they have so much more HE than the rifles. Both is now going to be holding back the 251 on the bottom side. This Alfkrader though, completely breaking through as there is quite simply nothing to stop it. These rifles do find themselves pinned down in the face of the lander shoots them, but the Churchill 5's got them covered as it does get reloaded by the Bedford supply. 
Sherman 2 now coming in as well. These Sherman 2s are actually really nice because they're only 120 points apiece, which is really, really good. Apologies about the menu there. So Spitfire Mark 9 comes in and hits the Marder 3. Going to be trying to prevent that from killing the Churchill or maybe just give the Churchill a chance to win that engagement even since the 13 HE of the main gun has the potential to kill a Marder 3. But if Herr Robert is smart, he'll wait until the Spitfire has done its job with that strafing run before engaging it. Otherwise that could end up really bad. But now this Marder 3 really needs to just stop here and actually focus on the Sherman 2 rather than the Churchill 5 because the Sherman 2 does have potential to find a kill but so does the Spitfire apparently as it strafes the Marda to death and with two Spitfires now in the air this JU-188 is not in a very good position is going to go down to the AA the both has shot that out of the sky However, in the meantime, the Churchill OP did die on the top side to the Stug 3. And at this moment, well, Herr Robert is losing ground. Mickey, back to the 50-50, has done a fantastic job of getting the pressure back on. This bombing strike did land very well, even though the JU-188 did die. But yeah, reclaiming this land on the top side, finding himself a salient in the mid... It's all very nice, but with the Marda 3 dead, this Puma is definitely left out to dry, and if that goes down, then we could just see things return to Herr Robert's favour. Spitfire Mark 9 once again. Bombing Strike does the job. Spitfire's now strafing the Panzer 4 as well. Crocodile looking to finally get a shot on target. Still does not which is rather impressive. This crocodile has just been missing all day long. It's got plenty of time to hit the mark. I'm just super surprised it hasn't actually done so yet. Come on, crocodile. There you go. That wasn't so hard. Another Spitfire Mark 9 coming in with the 215 HE power bombs to get rid of the Panard is successful in doing so. Very, very nice job here by Herr Robert to utilize his air force. It's something that he does do so well. One thing that Herr Robert's very well known for is his first pound Cerner and his use of the Hurricanes. And in this game, it seems he's taking full advantage of the Spitfires to have the same effect. The rifles do end up getting surrendered down here. Panther D has been brought in by Mickey. Does take out the Sherman too. But now is a time where Herr Robert will have an abundance of 17 pounders. And unless Mickey can find a way to deal with those, when inevitably Herr Robert starts bringing them in, he's going to be in trouble. I am really hoping that Herr Robert brings in a 17 pounder, because I think it's pretty much the only thing he has to take care of a Panther D. And just as I say that, a two star. 17 pounder is on its way. So, one thing I am quite surprised about is how quickly Herr Robert lost this ground on the top side. I think it was mainly due to the assistance of the Stug 3 here. It covered Mickey's infantry really well and allowed him to gain back ground. And Mickey briefly had a plus one, which gave him four points, but with 14 minutes and 20 seconds left on the clock, Mickey's going to have to get a move on if he wants to defeat Herr Robert and break through that 1,000-point marker. Because at this moment in time, if the game continues at a plus one for Mickey, then it's only going to be a draw, as you can see on the right side. No winner would be declared. Panther D, however, making short work of the Churchill 5. But Herr Robert does have his 17 pounder just around the corner and if he's able to unload that in range of the panther d this could be a very dead panther d and since mickey is lacking recon here he can't even see the 17 pounder even though it's on a road wow lucky there for mickey that the second shot did not hit the mark that's a six accurate six accuracy two star 
unit and missing twice in a row like that is pretty damn lucky. JU-188, that's going to go down. Did come in with a nasty bombing strike onto Herr Robert's rifles and you can see that was explo exploited by the ROA here. The ROA may also get the Panzerfaust or Faust Patron onto the AVRE and they do manage to do so finding the transmission damage. This next shot is going to have to find its way onto the command carrier. Spitfire's come in with the strafing run. Save the AVRE's bacon. That was close. There was a lot of potential there for loads of damage from Mickey. That Faust Patron on the ROA could have killed the MMG carrier, the command carrier, the AVRE, and left Mickey with a huge gap in the front line to exploit. Black M36s are now on the field, and they are going to assist by basically blocking the air. They can make these Spitfire Mark 9s fall back before they drop their bombs. In this case, the infantry is quite far forward, so the Spitfires were able, or well, the Spitfire was able to drop its bombs. But if they come, if they try and bomb this Panther D, for example, then it's not really going to work out because both of the Flak M36s would hit them by then, and uh, that would mean that the Spitfire would have to fall back. Panther D trying to use the fire position trick to pin the 17 pounder but these lander shoots and they've been stopped in their track for the time being but just in general Mickey's made a great push down here and, and definitely can utilize his Panthers on this airfield to make ground he's just got to find a way to deal with the AT guns which Herr Robert is certainly investing a lot into so I think there is potential for a comeback here if Mickey maintains this plus one he will be close to a draw or it will draw with Herr Robert, which means that if he goes to a plus two, he's likely going to be in a winning position. So all to play for still in this game. Herr Robert, of course, if he manages to stop the plus one, will also be in a winning position himself. But Mickey, driver knockout, internal fire. Surely this 17 pounder is going to find the kill this time. 16 AP versus 13 armor, though. Not the most assured kill, but eventually goes down. Panther D out of action. 25 pounder now being brought in for Herr Robert. Does have this decent artillery to utilize and is going to be using it to try and stun these M36s and get rid of them so that his air force can be online once again. So this 17 pounder can have to be careful. Flak 36 is going to engage that and do quite a quite a good bit of damage. Honey's coming down going to try and push back these lander shoots and 25 pounders now opened up. Now the main thing I see in the town here is that the AVRE is still alive. Now even though it has a transmission damage I still feel like it could be a force to be reckoned with because both players are going to be struggling with infantry availability this late in the game and if Herr Robert can continue to value trade with the AVRE then he's going to be in an advantageous position moving forwards. But currently Mickey in a really good spot. The plus one's still ticking. He's got a Jagdpanzer to come into this airfield. And that 14 front armour is a lot more formidable than the 13 front armour that the Panther D had. So something that he may be able to exploit in order to make some ground. But once again, does definitely need to find a way to clean up these AT guns Otherwise, he's going to be in a very tough position to push forwards. 17 pounder. Careful, Mickey. You got side armor showing. Second shot going to come through. Ammo storage hit. Jagdpanzer is now falling back. This 17 pounder going to be taking out that SDK of Z7. I didn't see in time if that was actually carrying anything, but that would have been deadly if it was. Jagdpanzer is lucky to be alive. That was a large mistake there from Mickey, allowing that to almost be side shot. Got away with it this time around. Lander shoots him now being pinned on the airfield. This is a really, really close game right now. So plus one for Mickey. Like I said, he's going to be building up to a draw if he continues to score as is. 
And since we are in phase C, I would say that the Festung probably has the advantage because they have the Panthers that can really exploit this open range on the bottom side. But if the 17 pounders are allowed to clean up these vehicles, then Mickey's just going to be in a pretty damn bad spot. So the answer to Mickey's problems is basically finding a way to deal with 17 pounders. And if he can, then he can find a plus two and that will secure the victory for him. SDKFZ7 did push through on the top side, I believe. Ended up getting surrendered in the bush here. So I can't verify that unit. So 3 tries to engage a Sherman 2. Just going to be backing off because it is already stressed due to the Spitfire coming in and strafing that. But two 25 pounders now on the field and they are going to be trying to clean up this Flak 88 and then probably the Flak M36 is soon after. Now it is pretty important to focus the Flak 88 first because that does have the 15 HE available. But now we see an engagement between the Stug and Sherman at close range. Sherman gets the internal fire that is very important. If Herr Robert micros this correctly he will be able to use its main gun to continue shooting at the Stug 3. If these ROA reveal themselves, that Sherman will change target. But at the moment, the Sherman's just constantly missing. It's really bad. It has been told to manually target the Stug 3, so... I think Herr Robert's really hoping for a kill there, because those two star Stugs can actually be very, very deadly. But nice job bringing in the honey on this bottom side. It has started to chunk the flak, and th oh, the flak 36. But Mickey does have a reply to that in this pack 40. It does utilize that 1,200 meter range, so we'll force back the honey for the time being. Sherman 2 takes out the Stug 3. And that is a lovely kill for Herr Robert on this top side. German 2 going to be hitting the spear throop. Now we see an AT gun come on through. 17 pounder on this bottom side. Could kill this 204 if it tries to get aggressive. The honey did survive the pack 40. So that is fine. But yeah, these 17 pounders, they've been so deadly and Mickey just hasn't found a way to deal with them. Meanwhile, the 25 pounders are taking out the Flak M36 and off map has now come in for Herr Robert which is going to decimate this defensive line of Mickey's on the top side and Mickey's going to be investing in a Flak 88 up here and that could potentially hold things back for a little while but there is a 4.2 inch mortar, two 4.2 inch mortars here for Herr Robert and since the 88 took a little too long to unload it does actually get pinned almost immediately so Herr Robert after what was a lot of aggression from Mickey has managed to find a way back he's stabilized after the aggression that came through from Mickey and stopping the plus one means that in four minutes and 20 seconds Herr Robert is going to be victorious. That is the full game timer as well. So really coming down to the wire here, it seemed as though Mickey was going to be able to make the plus two, but just got picked apart by the 17 pounders, has had his AA completely destroyed by the 25 pounders, and that's not good. He's just left him in such a awkward position. Panther D is not really going to be able to hold the top side and even if it does it's just stopping Herobert from coming out of the town rather than making any ground itself and that's just not good enough. Mickey's unfortunately dropped the ball here. The 17 pounders have done the job. Herobert found the answer and that was all he needed at the end of the day. Spitfire Mark 9 is going to be 
strafing run, the Flak 36. Flak 36 and all AA is resistant to airstrikes, so you can see that two strafing runs there uh, did not get the job done. But now we see a Spitfire Mark 9 coming in with the bombs onto the LAFH, that gets rid of that. That was potentially trying to counter battery the 25 pounders, but the artillery of Herald, but considerably better than the artillery of the Festung. And the main way that I would see the Festung dealing with the 25 pounders is either with artillery or with the bombers. And since a lot of the bombers have already died and Herr Robert has air supremacy, those artillery pieces are all that Mickey would have left to rely upon. And due to Herr Robert's artillery being better, the counter battery is, is enough. And that's why Mickey has struggled to basically take care of the 17 pounders at the end of the day. But here we do see the Panther D go down. There was potential there that that was a kill from the 2 inch carrier. I think it was the crocodile that picked up the kill but it looked a bit odd there how it died. May have to check that at the end of the game. Anyway Hummel is going to get bombed by the Spitfire Mark 9 and Mickey has less and less units left on the field and this really shows one of the strengths of the 15th infantry is just their sheer availability of units whilst Mickey is kind of running low the 15th infantry has a significant force on the field still and still has infantry coming in to reinforce so just really good value trades here in the town from Herr Robert really added added up to make this the case like this AVRE has survived the entire game and that is just really bad for Mickey because it means that infantry squad after infantry squad is dying. And now we can see at the end here the breakthrough. 60% territory lead plus 2. Counting up plenty of points and Herr Robert will be finding himself the victory. It does technically class as a minor victory mind you. But still a victory, and Herr Robert has proved himself to be the better of the two players here after a draw in the first game, which was very close. But now the 15th infantry getting the better of the Festung is uh, certainly something that had potential going into the matchup. But I would say the Festung had a pretty good chance of finding the victory themselves moving into the latter phases of the game but the availability just ended up getting the better of Mickey and so did the 17 pounders. That Churchill OP just completely overkilling that unit on the bottom side. Flak M36 is going to be strafed but the Sherman 2 takes care of that. Now a plus 3. Really really nice game for Herr Robert. Really nice game for both players honestly. I think both players made decent plays throughout this game and I am glad to have watched this series. It was a very nice two games between these two players and thank you to them for playing them. So there we go. In the full 40 minutes it took Herr Robert to win versus Mickey but in the end Herr Robert was value trading a lot better which meant he ended up with 4,395 kills to 1,740 losses which is a significant KD. If we jump over to the kills, this AVRE smashed so many infantry into the ground, killed two of the Panzer 39s and really helped secure that town. Churchill 5 did do a nice job on the airfield early on, although I do feel like the Churchill could have been a more aggressive. Like a play across the airfield with double Churchill 5 at the start of the game would have been really, really nice for Herr Robert and something that he definitely could have pulled off. Uh, even just bringing in like one originally and then bringing in a second, charging forward some Bren Group to reveal the infantry that was holding the airfield against him and then just completely running them through and finding that ground early on at least. In moving into phase B, it would have been difficult because of the SGO7 pack, but um, that was nicely dealt with by Herr Robert due to his airplay that really showed um, throughout this game, like utilizing those Spitfires just like he does the Hurricanes in the first Panserna. 
Now this six pounder did clean up both of those Panziegas. Really smart play there from Herr Robert. Saw Mickey trying to get them out of there and just fast moved as much as he could until Mickey was forced to engage. And then he unloaded the six pounder. The Panziegas have limited HE on their guns. So they weren't doing, they weren't pinning the six pounder too much and it was able to get both of the kills. That was really, really nice to see. Uh, Crocodile smashes the Panzer IV. Eventually, it took so many shots to get the job done. And then you can see the Air Force really coming into play. Spitfire takes out the Astro 7 pack. Spitfire Mark 9 strafe to death the Marta 3 as well. That was a very difficult kill, probably for Mickey to deal with, but it is what it is. The Spitfire Mark 9 does have enough HE to penetrate the Marta 3 to due to it being open top and limited armor. 17 pounder took out the Panther D, then the Jagd Panzer went down to the 17 pounder. Then the Sherman II, look how many kills that got. That was the one that came through on the top side to support the town and uh, get rid of the salient that Mickey had. And then the six pounder cleaned up a second Panther D. I think we missed that, but either way, strong kill list there for Herr Robert. On the side of Mickey, his infantry play was actually really good early on. Utilizing the JU-188s to potentially find surrenders was fantastic, and using the Panzertrex to ambush the Honeys was really well done. But unfortunately, just not enough kills, um, which seems hard to believe um, due to the amount of infantry that's died here. But yeah, in the end, it still wasn't enough. It seems as though Herr Robert just sort of focuses on having as much infantry as he can on his division, and it did pay off in the end. Panther D did clean up the Churchill 5 and the Sherman 2. Almost paid itself off, but not quite. And there you have it. Really, really fun game to watch. I really enjoyed this series between these two players. But that's all from me. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. And I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.